What is up, guys? It's Phil here from Tamed Waters. Um, I've been starting to get my YouTube, or I've been wanting to get my YouTube channel started, and I haven't had time to do editing. So I'm just going to do uh, short little clips and just add them to the page. I know a lot of people like unboxing videos, so this is going to be um, sort of like an unboxing video. I'm just going to be acc acclimating fish and showing you guys around. So I'll swing you guys over here. It's going to be a little bit tricky. My phone doesn't want to switch uh, camera views for some reason. So I'll show you what I got going on right here. If I can do this accurately. You guys see anything? Okay, there we go. So I'm unboxing some stingrays currently. Um, what I what I use for unboxing and acclimating is um, these white containers. You can get them at like Dollar Tree. Um, they are perfect, except for huge, huge things like big stingrays or big plecos. Um, but that's how I acclimate pretty much everything. So it works out good. You can get them for a buck at Dollar Tree. I'm going to set my phone down for a bit, and then I'll show you guys when I put some more fish inside those containers. The store's looking good, though. I'll take you guys around in a little bit. All right, guys. It's about a half an hour later, and I'm starting to acclimate some fish. We got, I'm trying to focus, we got some Matoros. Cool thing about wild Matoros is look at the different like color patterns, different amount of dots, whatever. These I'm pretty excited for. Some true, uh, true drag arrow rays. Also pretty excited for these. Um, if you know your plecos, you'll know what these are right away. But these are the uh, L260s. Looking good. And then we have a Royal Pleco here. I think I ordered them as L190s. I just got to double check because there's a few different Royals that come in kind of kind of a little different. So, but I think those are L... Okay, he's sucking on me. I think these are L190s. Um, and we'll start acclimating these guys. So what I do is I put them in these containers and I usually just take like a little cup of water. I used to drip acclimate with uh, like airline tubing, but I don't really have a ton of airline tubing right now. So just take a cup of water, put it in here in each one and then slowly acclimate them over a good hour or so because these these rays in, in particular are some spendier rays queen air best really really a cool pleco um l260s but yeah let me get these guys in some tanks and i'll keep showing you guys around what i'm doing actually in the meantime let me just walk around the shop i haven't showed too many people some stuff lately i got some clown plecos wild caught congos we got some Cardinal Tetras Wildcat from Brazil, looking beautiful. Corridor Mac Lattice came in earlier this week. Sorry if my phone is like the lighting keeps adjusting. It's, I don't have a nice camera to, you know, do stuff, video footage with. Let's see, what do we got in here? We got some Panda Gara. And then we have that bubble nesting fish from Africa that you guys saw. If you would follow my post, you saw it recently. It wasn't my picture. I can't get a good picture of these guys. Um, they do have the exact same coloration as I picture, but these guys are much smaller, so we'll see how they end up looking. Plants are looking kind of sad. I'm waiting on a good order of plants. We do have some Anubias in. Um, we got some nice blue, uh, these aren't blue dreams, these are actually blue diamonds. Let's see. Fricata rainbows up here. Yeah, all sorts of cool stuff. We got some shrimpies up here. Some of Mono's down here. One of my favorite guys right here. Ivan Carl at Okita. Look at this guy. I love these things. Anyway, go get back to acclimating. I'll bring you guys back to the kind of a store tour as well. And unboxing video. Alright guys, I just acclimated these guys. They're obviously a lot more active than when they came in. We live in Minnesota up here, so you gotta be super careful with temperature acclimating. Um, I dumped out most of their water, and then I'll probably, uh, there's a tiny bit of their water in there, which I don't usually like to do, but stingrays, you don't really want to get them in the, in the net as much as, as least as possible as you can. Look at this little guy, he's cute. Pretty skinny, I'll fatten them up here, deworm them, medicate, and get them ready for sale. <clears throat> Alright, got the second group here. We 
look good already. Nice, healthy, established tank. You can see my some algae in my tanks, which I gotta clean up. I don't put in um, plecos into these guys' tanks because plecos sometimes will uh, suck on the slime coat of the stingray. So, if you're looking at getting a stingray, you don't want too many plecos in your tank or if any. All right, L260, Queen Air Bucks. Really sought after pleco, just like the L134 zebra plecos. This is another really sought after one. Just dumped out most of their water because usually I'll fill their water up to like you know most of this full with acclimating from tank water. Um, I, I run a small shop, I quarantine everything, but unfortunately, sometimes I got to quarantine into um, a shop tank. If that's the case, everything gets um, put not for sale for like until they're all out of quarantine, you know. But it works out good if you if you heard about my fish, you know that they're pretty healthy. So, some people are against grabbing plecos with their hands. Nah, if you know what you're doing, it's just fine. So, show you a few of these guys. This one's really cool. Look at this guy. Or gra gal, I don't know. That's a beauty right there. Let them go. Alright, I'm gonna do that for all these blackos and I'll show you the next batch. Alright, got the Jaguar cats. With or not cats, I got jaguar catfish in stock that came in too. Jaguar stingrays, ready to go down here with these peacocks. So I'm fattening up the peacocks so they don't mistake this tail for anything. Um, other, after they get acclimated a little bit, they should be just fine together. Look at that. That's a really cool stingray right there. We got the other jaguar catfish. You don't see these available often, so someone scoop them up when they're out of quarantine. I usually quarantine stingrays for over a week. You can see underneath that pink color is ammonia burn from being in the bag all the way from South America. That's a the ammonia they release will burn them a little bit. See there? If, you, if I added the coloring a little bit, you can or like the lighting, you can see their patterns better. Absolutely stunning. Got them in here with some pretty sweet peacock bass. Panax are acclimated, dumped out most of their water, their backs are actually out of the water, so I'm going to try to hurry up with this instead of doing too long of a video. Look at this though. How stunning is that? So we'll put him, or her, whatever, these guys in here. This is a nice little 40 breeder we got at the shop. Um, there's plenty of wood in there for them. There's one Sunshine Pleco left. We sell out of Sunshines pretty quickly, so I'm surprised that one's still here. Yeah, I'll get these guys out of their water and show you in a bit. All right, here we have some Epistogramma. Um, some people call them sunsets. The scientific name should be Adoloapa. I don't really know how to say it correctly, but it's a long name that starts with the A. We're acclimating those guys to here. Got to be kind of gentle with uh, quarantining Epistogrammas. I've noticed that they're not quite as hardy, you know. Um, and then my buddy showed up. This is Elliot. He, he helps me out quite a bit here at the shop. He actually has more years experience in the fish shop than I do. He's worked at what, three or four? I worked at two different shops. Uh, the first one was in Wilmer, Minnesota. And I had three different owners of the shop and like five different managers. And I was the only consistent employee. <laughs> That's and awesome. In college, I worked up in Duluth at World of Fish with John and Lisa. And yep. Yeah, I love John and Lisa. I actually used to shop there as a college student and I trade some stuff into Lisa, so it was a lot of fun. All right, guys, move on to the next. I'm gonna try to see if this you guys can see this with the blue lighting. So our LEDs have a night mode, and we put those on sometimes when acclimating fish that we think will stress out. These are some little Hebrosis corridoras. Um, it's like a type of pygmy quarry that I absolutely love. Um, there were also a wild, some sort of wild Otis things that came in, a type that I've never seen, and you guys all know that I uh, I bring in some of the coolest wild Otis sinkless. So I'm pretty excited about that. We got some wild L136Bs over here. We got some flash plecos down here, and check out these guys. Wow, the blue lighting is really messing up the camera, but jaguar catfish from Brazil. Uh, All right, here we got some zebra otosynclus, also called otosynclus kakama, I believe. It's the scientific name. Love these things. Can't barely keep them in stock. Any cool otosynclus people love. Um, so we're putting them in this little tank right here where we used to have the pair of otosynclus britskis. Lots of algae. When I get Otosynclus in, I go around and I find what tank 
has more brown algae or green algae, preferably the brown stuff actually, and they do really good. Um, the, the most stressful thing about imports or any order in general is moving stuff around and finding tank space. I gotta do that a lot because my store is so small. So once I get a bigger store, that'll be a lot easier. But for now, this will have to do. So it gets kind of stressful moving things all over the place and out of quarantine into quarantine, you know what I mean? So, but yeah, these guys are sweet. Check them out. I know you guys have already seen this in this video, but I'm pretty excited to see how good the Jaguars are already doing. Like they were munching down just a couple minutes after I put them in the tank, but look at them now. They're just going kind of crazy. Fun, fun. It's a pair too, so if anyone wants to try to breed Jaguars, it's a male and female. Just like a male and female uh, tiger over there, which I'll probably end up keeping this pair actually. Bringing you back over to the Matoros. They seem to be eating already as well. I put a ton of black worms in here, hoping that it'll sit in the sand and not, hopefully the water's not too hot so the worms die because that would spoil the water a bit. But the, usually the worms just chill in the sand and they'll have a snack all night long tonight. It's a lot of worms though, so I will keep an eye on this tank, but just want to fatten them up while I can and they're all eating so far. Alright, we got some of the Apistos into their tanks. Seen a couple other species I know are not Atahualapas, so that's kind of the fun thing about getting wild Apistos in. I don't know if you can see any in this video, but we'll go around here. Most of them look about right, but I see in a couple I think might be something else. Alright, I'll show you those. I forgot to show you guys this, but this is actually the first thing I did before I started the videos, but I got some beautiful, beautiful, beautiful wild discus in. Got the night lighting on right now, but let me turn this on just for a little bit. You can't even see the colors on these guys, actually. Heckles looking phenomenal. Red spotted. And then I'll bring you over this way to our quarantine section where Elliot's hanging out. One of his favorite fish as well as mine is over here. Yeah. We got the coral red pencils. Not red right now, obviously a little stress. Yeah, a little red. We got some, actually not bad for just coming in. And then we got the Habrosis Corys. And I've seen a couple other types of Corys in here. I think baby Corys that they just sent us, Habrosis. So that's a little exciting as well. <coughs> Alright guys. <coughs> Sorry, coughing a little bit. As Michael's Fisherman would say, I'm alright. <coughs> but, let's see, we got the Jaguar catfish. I'm showing you here, out of the uh, blue lighting that I had them in. And they're about ready to go into their tank. I believe these are actually, so like, I think the scientific family is the Aka. It starts with A, A-U-C-H, I can't say it. But it's like a type of wood cat, I believe. These are always been one of my favorite catfish, and I never used to see them in the hobby really growing up. Uh, there was maybe one local fish store up north of here a little bit that used to get them in a bit, but I learned that. I'm pretty pumped about having these in again. Sold my last one about like four or five months ago, and we got more in stock here. We'll just give them a little quarantine, and they'll be ready to sell in less than a week, about a week. Some more plecos for you guys here. These are L136Bs. It's a type of hypencystris. Stop with them, bud. There you go. A really cool type of hypencystris. Um, the hypencystris family would be something like the zebra plecos, I believe, and some other things. Smaller pleco, like to eat a, probably omnivores, but preferably a meat. I'll have to check on these guys, though. Don't take my word for that. We got Elliot grabbing the flash plecos. L204, right? I think that's right. It's funny because I got L205s in here right now, too. Look at that guy. I'll bring him over here because otherwise people go yell at me for having them out of the water too long, even though they're just fine. Really cool. Threw some pieces of wood in there with them. Um, Alright guys, we got some black worms in as well. Obviously not imported, black worms come from Cali. Let's feed some fish with this. It's kind of gross having those on your fingers. Let's go over here. Oh, Elliot just pulled the divider, so I'll show you some of these guys. We got a copper. We got some greens. These are smargadinas right here. Looking spectacular as usual. 
Uh, we'll show you. We got these Ryukins down here looking good. Chasing each other around. We have these water or no royals i believe these are l190s if i'm mistaken i'm sorry i'll have to look at my invoices these are finishing up quarantine actually we got some young adolf icories really young that's why their colors look all a little off these are supposed to be a quarry called luso Melis, i believe is the name we'll see there's a lot of quarries that look very similar to this these just came in on that order i forgot to get the video of it so we're going over it now we got some nice peacock engines in stock right now uh, I got a mess over here I had two guppy tanks um, start leaking yesterday while I was closing the shop while me and Elliot were and it's marine land tanks said the marine land tanks used to be the best tanks for me and I've had I can't even tell you how many I've had leak since I bought all brand new this summer so if you know any reps that work for Marineland, have them contact me. There's those Abrosis quarries. Coral reds are starting to look pretty good actually already. Really good. Um, I'm going to just take you through a mini store tour real quick. We got Jardini Arowanas hanging out up there with a the Rhino Pleco. We got some Rohani Barbs. Some These are all captive bred discus. We got one royal flower loach left, or whatever you want to call it. There's a few different names. Albino gibbiceps. We got some albino arowanas. We got a big lungfish. <clears throat> some awesome loracaria back there. I believe this is parva. Little ruby tetras. That's not ruby tetra. The other ones are. Um, I believe these are Corridor atro personatus or something along those lines we got Molini quarries right here with some green fire tetras one of my favorite tetras we got a little lemia right here that's actually one of my projects she's not going to be for sale or the whole group isn't little bristle nose we got some stir by quarries in here with some golden rams let me focus there you go look at that and some backwards pencils pseudomugo luminatus also called pseudomugo pasci previously look them up they're really sweet Got some glow lights, some endlers. I'm not gonna focus on guppies and all the captive bred stuff because I got all these imports in, so I'm gonna focus on all the wilds. Got the wild discus, of course. We threw the jaguar cats in here. Let's see if I'll, I'm gonna stir them up a little bit. Show you guys. Looking good as usual. Discus just ate, still shy. He just came in not that long ago, so obviously still a bit shy. We got some black rams. One of my favorites, as always. Like, I don't think there'll ever be a quarry that I like more. There's, there's one actually I like. See, 111. Check it out. It's super cool. Um, that's my goal to bring in C 111 this year. But look at these. It's Corridor Echis, I think also called the um, Horseman's Quarry. We got some green phantoms. Look at that. No editing, nothing. How amazing is that? These pistols are already flexing on each other a little bit. Looking good. Looking really good, actually. These are not the uh, Bleeding Heart Tetras. These are actually Robertsies, I believe they're called. Let's go. I'm going to try to make this video not super long. We got some Bellin socks. It's a Pike Live Bear. They have babies like like a, a guppy, but they're really cool. One of the first rare, cool, or rare at the time fish that I had fun breeding when I was younger. Started breeding those about 12. Got some Wormline Plecos along with some Croaking Grammys, some Black Angels. Pretty excited about these guys. They just came in were, um, a few days ago, so they're going through a quarantine. But these are pelvic chromis cumulus. You don't see these a lot. So, you know, Cribensis and all those other like dwarf cichlids, this is kind of similar to that. Quite a bit bigger, though. Look at my finger. Mixed guppies, of course. Corridor Suisi. Suisi or whatever everyone says. I don't know how to say it. These are the flash buckles that just came in. Let's see. Corey Macalotis, I think I just showed you guys some of this stuff. Check out our gold phantoms are the our, um, gold nuggets are the absolute best. You got to be very careful with quarantining these. I'm getting them from certain shops because um, these do not last in people's tanks for a reason. And I figured out a few tricks to get these guys to last a long time. Remember Tetras? By a long time, I mean like very healthy fish. Queen Arabes, looking good. 
Sherman Blue Rams. Rays still, you saw that huge pile that was there earlier. Zebra autos into their tank. Um, you guys already saw some of these. Purple Harlequins. I'm just kind of taking you guys through the whole entire store. I'm trying to show you some stuff you haven't seen yet. Got some clown killies. Let's see if they'll focus. Not really. Oh yeah, there you go. How cool is that? Shrimp I already showed you. Some exclamation point Razaboras. Um, there might be some CPDs left. Or not CPO, CPOs. Dwarf orange crayfish in here. And guys, I gotta work in a couple hours here, so I'm not gonna go get a nap for tonight's shift at the hospital. Um, I'm gonna end this video here soon. I hope you guys enjoyed coming along for this import. I'll do some more videos um, when I got time. I've been meaning to do videos since I started the shop, but I've just been so busy. As you guys know, I work as a nurse, but hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully it's not too long. Thanks, guys.